Well, we had to get up at some ungodly hour this morning. We're in the little village of Castro Verde, right on the edge of the Great Plains here, looking for these great bustards. This is one of the best places to get coffee here, and Frank's taken us to sample some of the local coffee. I am so amped to go and see the world's heaviest flying animal, the Great Bustard. The countryside of Portugal is steeped in ancient Roman history. I'm standing at a site called Miro Bricha, which is an ancient Roman temple. Some of these sites date back to the time of Christ. Perched on top of this hill, this temple looks out on the great plains on which the great bustard likes to feed and live out its lifestyle. We're going to head out from this area steeped in cultural history to go look for these wonderful birds. Let's go birding. James, we've come up to the top of this volcanic outcrop here. This is the Senora Darcelli. You get a good view of the plains from up here, and you can see it's a very sparsely occupied area. It's quite deprived. Flat, flat plains dotted with cork oaks and home oaks, with the odd village and the odd mont here and there. And from here you can get a good view of A, what the countryside is about, and B, sometimes you can see where the great bustards are. The great busters, they tend to like being on the low ridge. And although this looks very flat, it's actually gently undulating. And the great busters tend to be on the top of a ridge where they can see danger from everywhere, from all sides. And if you come up to them, they'll walk very stately over the side. I think that's one over there. Yeah, just over there. Yeah, do you see him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're very, very difficult to approach. You, you know, you can't... You can't be in Europe, which is fairly populated, and have 16 kilos of meat on you, you know, and not be persecuted. So nowadays, the LPN and Speyer are doing a huge amount of work to protect these, and actually, this is one of the few countries where Great Bus is actually increasing in numbers, and it's due to their work, their hard work. Oh, look, the common swift there. Oh, beautiful. So, oh. Frank, let's, let's go down there and see if we can get a closer look at those birds. OK, we'll have to be very careful because this is near the breeding time and you don't wanna, we don't want to approach them too close, but we'll see what we can do. Sounds great. OK, Sounds let's great. go. Frank, just slow down. I think we've got a couple of birds here on the right. Yeah, yeah. Is that them? Yeah, that's them. Oh, they just took off. Oh, man. Wow, they are really flighty, huh? Yeah. OK, we're going to freewheel from here, James, OK? Because this is the type of habitat they really like. Wide open spaces where they can see danger from any quarter. They like these flowers, different habitat. I mean, loads of stuff for them to eat. Look, 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 there's a group of them over there. Fantastic. That's really good. That's about 400 metres. That's really about as close as you can get before they'll spook. You don't want to get much closer than that because uh, they're a very threatened species and we try not to push them. So we've had a couple of great bastards fly off. They're very, very flighty. They should not be disturbed. But we've got a single bird feeding on the other side of the plateau. There's a little ridge over here and there's a nice line of trees which we are going to try use as cover to get good footage of these birds. It's going to be very, very tricky. We're going to have to probably leopard crawl, I think, through this, through this grass here, up until that tree, to get some good views. But let's give, it a, let's give it a go. <laughs> Excellent. Real so we're keeping well beneath the ridge here, climbing up to it to see if we can peer over and get a look at this great bastard. Now, they've got incredibly good eyesight, incredibly good, probably at least three to four times better than our own eyesight. And this guy is just minding his own business over the ridge line here. And this is going to be really tough. I think we're going to have to leopard crawl about 100 meters here until we get to a position on that ridge where we can hopefully get a wonderful look at this spectacular bird. Smoking ponies, how much further do we have to go? We've got to keep down. We've got to keep below this ridge because we mustn't let him see us. He must not spook. 
This has got to be one of the hardest I think I've ever worked for a bird. <laughs> Same here, mate. You better have some cold beers in the truck when we get back. Yeah. Well, we managed to sneak up and get killer views of a great bustard doing a stately walk across the beautiful landscape here in South Portugal. Our golden bird, the great bustard. This bird is listed as vulnerable in CITES. There are only about 30,000 great bustards left on planet Earth and most of them are found in this area of the Mediterranean, Portugal, Spain, there's a few populations in Mongolia and further east, but this really is one of the best places in the world to view this majestic bird. It's early May and these birds are nesting right now. If you come to South Portugal in the last week of March, first two weeks of April, you're going to witness these males doing their foam bath display. And right now, here in early May, this vulnerable, incredibly threatened bird is on eggs right now, possibly some of them on chicks. What a fascinating animal and something that we really need to protect for future generations. Birding in Portugal is not just all about birding though. You've got amazing beaches, undiscovered beaches, you've got rocky cliffs, you've got fantastic golf courses, you've got good wine, you've got history. I mean, the area that we've been birding over today on the, on the Plinis is actually the site of a very famous battle, the Milagres de Rique, where basically Portugal was made. On the 25th of July, 1139, the Portuguese king, or proto-king, Don Infonso Arrique, beat the Moors for the last time and basically founded Portugal then on the 25th of July 1139 and we've been birding over that battlefield seeing the bustards and there today's Milagre d'Uric, the miracle of Uric. To have these great bustards here and to be able to see them in such good light and in such good numbers thanks to the LPN and Speyer, fantastic. The miracle of Uric, the great bustards.